Well, hello to our fellow aviators, aviation lovers, and simulation enthusiasts. Welcome to another Pilot Dreams channel tutorial. Today, we're going to learn how to use the OPT, the Onboard Performance Tool. The OPT is going to be part of the next PMDG package for the 737 from Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, which is going to be a huge upgrade for the simulator. The OPT is a tool that allows us to calculate the speeds for takeoff, the engine setting for takeoff, and to adjust them for the different runway conditions, such as ice, snow, different wind, different temperatures. So, without further delay, let's dive in. The OPT is usually displayed on the side screen, which we use to display the JPSON charts and other flight-related materials. The OPT is one of the applications on the screen. In my company, we use the iPad, and of course, in the PMDG update, you're going to see it as a screen to the right or to the left, depends on which city you are choosing to fly or fly today. Once you choose the OPT, you see the different models of the aircraft available for you. For my OPT, this is just these the models. So let's go for the 737. And uh, we can choose between the 800 or the 900. I don't know which uh, models exactly will be included in the PNDG add-on, but let's choose the 900. And of course, we have to choose the correct tail number. So let's choose uh, just the first one. So after we choose the aircraft uh, registration and type, we're getting to this screen. Before we start typing any data, let's look below and see that there are four options. Take of dispatch, take of all engine, landing dispatch, and landing in route. So the options we are going to use once we're on the flight are the take of dispatch. Take of all engines is something that is used by uh, the flight planners. It involves some parameters of uh, legal requirements, which are different from the flight uh, phase itself. So, so when we're on board and we're doing the calculations for takeoff, uh, legally what we are obligated to do is this screen the take of dispatch. Same thing for landing. Uh, landing dispatch is done by uh, the planners and when we approach to land we use the landing in route okay so a little bit confusing but takeoff dispatch is what you use when you're on the cockpit for takeoff and landing in route is what you use before landing so let's start with the takeoff first of all we're going to need the runway so let's try Frankfurt today echo delta delta foxtrot next thing we need to choose is the runway so we see there are many runways over here uh, all of the runways of uh, Frankfurt actually and you can see also that for 25 center there is a NOTAM 25 center Tango 1 that means that there is a NOTAM that affects the takeoff run available takeoff distance or something like that so let's choose another runway for today let's go with the 07 center you can choose the intersection as you can see we can do a full runway takeoff or choose one of the other intersections if we go to the Jeppesen for Frankfurt we can see that for 07 center we can take off from other uh, areas this is the beginning of the runway but if we take off from here we have less uh, taxi distance so let's see what is the name of uh, this uh, line of position it's called lima 17 so let's choose lima 17 just for the example so lima 17 conditions we have varying weather conditions uh, please remember that for takeoff we're going to use the actual conditions that means uh, standing water slush and dry snow etc and for landing we're going to use braking actions as you can see here we have from good to poor so now we're doing the takeoff so let's uh, do something like slash wet snow and immediately we're required to enter what is the depth of the slash and wet snow so let's do something like uh, three millimeters and choose done wind just before takeoff you can use the actual wind but if you do this uh, during flight preparation so you get the uh, weather from the atis and uh, the rule is to take half of the headwind okay so let's assume today there is 10 knots headwind so we're going to use five uh, we can also enter the exact direction of the wind let's say it's coming from run zero zero at uh, 10 knots okay so it's going to be nine headwind and we're going to use five knots because we always take half the headwind the outside air temperature let's say it's uh since we have a slash and wet snow say something like around 10 degrees and the q and age would be 1005 thrust rating okay we can choose between optimum takeoff uh, and reduce takeoff takeoff one takeoff two and of course wind shear if there are wind shear conditions let's choose optimum and let the application choose the optimum setting for us 
flaps again we're going to go with optimum you can force it to, to be something else between 1 to 25 if you have short field performance or 1 to 15 if not bleeds on or off if there is not enough power for takeoff this is uh, especially with the heavy configuration on uh, short runways so you can choose the bleeds off takeoff and this will give you extra power uh, but of course there is uh, something of a non-standard procedure involved with that and we have to go to the fcom to see what is the exact procedure for taking off with the bleeds turned off and of course the weather is not good so uh, we're going to take off with engine anti-ice uh, since we're going to do uh probably in this kind of weather a slash and wet snow uh, we're going to need some treatment uh, like de-icing or anti-icing so no wing anti-ice but the engine anti-ice of course is going to operate at uh, zero degrees and with improved plan we're going to go with none next thing we ha you have to do is to enter the takeoff weight of the aircraft you can see this one at the, the init ref page in the fmc i'm going to put a link in the description below for the fmc tutorial so let's say we're taking off today with the 71 tons and the center of gravity again you're going to get it from the load sheet so let's say 21 uh, percent okay and you can see also after we chose the runway that there is no emergency turn for this one right if there is a special emergency turn special efp engine failure process it's going to be over here and you can click on it and see what is the exact route you have to follow please pay attention before that you can see here things like the airport info add an airport if it's not in the database enter a not on the effects the runway take off run available take a distance available if you're dispatched with an mel say for example that your auto brakes are not working okay and you're going to do it over here uh let's say that uh, with flight controls we're going to have today uh, auto speed brake system not working it means that if you stop your takeoff the auto speed brakes are not going to go automatically and you have to raise the speed brakes manually so let's choose this one just for the example then then we can calculate and you're going to have the output all the things here remain the same of course we have to compare between the uh, pilot in command to the co-pilot and see that both uh, crew members chose the exact same data and now we're going to compare the output so the output is flaps 10 within the section uh, lima 17 for 07 center we take off weight of 71 the acceleration height is uh, 1576 feet and it's going to be takeoff two please pay attention there is no assumed temperature over here the reason for that is that the runway is contaminated we chose slash and wet snow so we can take off only with the reduced thrust and not with the assumed uh, temperature so it's takeoff two and it's going to give us 91.8 and one with trim of five and the v speeds are 124 140 and 147 and these are the numbers we're going to enter in the fmc uh, again there is a link in the description below to the fmc tutorial so you go to the fmc and uh, in the n1 page you choose the rate take of two you now assume temperature and you're going to get the n1 number of 91.8 and you go to the next page the takeoff page and you put on flap stand and then you're going to get the v speeds of course make sure that you choose runway wet Let's change something over here so we can see the assumed temperature. Let's go for a dry runway. Okay, with the, exactly the same data and calculate. Look at the difference. Okay, because the runway is not wet and V1 is much higher, we got flaps one. And again, the runway is dry now, so there is a delayed takeoff also with assumed temperature. Again, look at the FMC tutorial, but uh, on the N1 page, we're going to put delayed takeoff two, and the assumed temperature is going to be. 42 please pay attention we got flaps one usually we would rather take off with flaps five it's a little bit more fuel consumption but the, the tail clearance for the takeoff is better so we're going over here and we're changing it from flaps one to flaps five and we calculate again and you see we got the result with flaps five if you press the full over here you're going to get rid of the selective or assumed temperature and get the full de rate for that so in case we're going to do that, we're going to get a delay take of 2 with 91.8, just like before. Because there is an option for runway graphics to see how much distance you have left if you decide to reject takeoff or something like that. So when you press this, you can see the all engine go uh, distance, which is uh, 9,112 feet. 
the engine out go of course the distance will be longer because we're taking off with just one engine the accelerate stop distance this means if you stop your takeoff at uh, v1 takeoff run available takeoff distance available available stop distance and the slope and the way this is the first part this is the takeoff dispatch and it is part of the pre-flight preparations and all of the data that we're getting over here is going to be entered into the fmc in the takeoff uh, and n1 page okay the second part uh, or the second option that we're going to use as a flight crew in the opt is the landing in route of course we're going to use that every time we land and there is a question about the ability of the aircraft to stop so we choose over here down below as you can see the landing in route uh, let's clear the mel let's clear it for now because there are other stuff that are more interesting and when we're landing we're going to use actually the mail functions if there are any let's begin with going line by line so we're going to choose the airport uh, let's choose another one this time let's choose a more challenging airfield uh, let's choose uh, london luton i think it's e g g w exactly luton and uh, runways let's choose uh, two five and now we have the gradient so let's go for the gradient and you can we can enter the gradient ignore it or go for the minimum uh, gradient so let's just put the two five minimum gradient if you want to know what is the gradient so you go to the approach plate and we can see that for uh, the final approach we're going to the minimums and over here at the minimums we see uh, what are the different minimums so category three two and one if there is a different minimum depending on your go around gradient there will be two columns over here but we can see that in Luton that there is no uh, special uh, go around minima for uh, different gradients so we're just going to go with this minima and back to the onboard performance too we're going to choose to five uh, degrees or actually percent minimum gradient conditions of the runway i remind you that for takeoff we use the actual conditions that means uh, uh, wet dry etc and for landing as you can see there is no wet dry there's only dry good just the braking actions let's say we're going to do an auto land and we're going to use a, a medium braking action so medium auto land okay see the difference between medium auto land and medium that affects the landing distance of course so medium auto land wind again as we take off you should be conservative to make sure that you are able to stop so let's assume for now the wind is zero knots and the outside air temperature let's put it around zero degrees q and age um, let's say one zero two zero now we have to choose the flaps for landing there is no optimum options over here either flaps 30 or 40 let's start with flaps 40 uh, sorry let's start with flaps 30 see if we can break uh, bleeds on or off again if you need extra power for the go around you can choose bleeds off anti-ice well i assume that we're going to pass some clouds during the approach to land until uh, low altitude unless we would not uh, use auto land so let's go with engine and wing reverse so let's start with uh, no credit that means reverse idle let's see if we can break uh, breaks let's choose all and see which brakes are able to perform in this medium runway conditions non-normal checklist this is the place to enter malfunctions when you land as you remember for takeoff we use the mel page or the mel screen for landing we're going to use the non-normal checklist if there is any what do i mean if we have airspeed unreliables flaps up anti-skidding operative hydraulics uh, system malfunction etc etc let's go with anti-skidding operative flaps 30 or 40 and as you can see automatically the brakes and the spoilers are removed let's start with no credit and let's assume we're going to land with the almost the maximum landing uh, weight for uh, 737 900 so let's go with 71 tons and the vrf add is mandatory five knots and let's calculate bang predicted in root field length exceeds landing distance available so as you can see the landing distance once you go in with anti-skid in operative is 12,000 feet and you're not able to land in luton especially with not with flaps 30 uh, let's go with flaps 40 and with the uh, all up in the reversers again it's not going to cut it because luton is a short field you can see that choosing flaps 40 and all up improved our uh, situation dramatically from 12,000 feet to almost 8,600. Now let's assume that uh, the braking actions in Luton are not medium but good and do the calculation again. Bang! 
6,500 feet, we are able to land at Luton. That does mean that this is the best option for us. With that is Kid inoperative in Luton, which is a very short uh, runway. Maybe it would be a better idea to divert to Stansted or Heathrow. But today we're just learning the performance too. Uh, we can see the runway graphics and you can see uh, that the stop point is 6,500 feet, which is very close to the end. Of course, there's assumption here for uh, 1,500 feet air distance as you can see in the graphics and it's written also over here assume air distance 1500 feet and you can see the landing distance available let's go back again and go for the normal operation so Luton let's go with dry no malfunctions back to flaps 30 re-enter the gradient anti-ice engine full swing reverse let's start with idle no credit all the braking actions no normal checklist, the spoilers are working, an almost maximum landing weight, calculate, and what we have here. We can see that uh, the max manual landing distance is 6,000 feet. Everything that is painted uh, yellow is not meeting the landing distance available, and the max auto option is also available for us. And you can see the landing distance available is 6,800 feet. And with max auto, we're going to stop at 6,522 feet. This is not a pleasant uh, experience for the passengers. So let's try to improve our situation and reduce the approach speed by choosing flaps 40 and going for all operational thrust reversers. Let the tool calculate again. And again, we see that we're only able to stop with the maximum auto, and uh, but adding flaps 40 and uh, all the reverses on enable us to reduce 300 feet from the landing distance. We're going to see it also here. And as you can see, it draws us where is the max manual, max auto. Three is almost the end of the runway. Probably in real life it will stop, but we can't uh, assume that and act legally based on that. Let's check what uh, happens if we're going to come just two tons lighter. So 69 tons, calculate. And now we see that brake 3 is also available for us. And braking uh, experience for the passengers and for us will be normal. And we'll be able to vacate the runway smoothly. There's also an option to send an output for the takeoff performance data. Again, you press send output. And actually the best thing is to see it as a bug card. So you do down and you have a bug card, which is actually something you can print or take a screenshot of with exactly the delay takeoff and uh, all the V speeds, the flap setting, and all the data you used for the calculation. So for summary, the onboard performance tool is a great aid to calculate uh, the data for takeoff and landing. Of course, it is uh, authorized legally. PMDG are doing a great job to add this option to their uh, PMDG 737 add-on to the Flight Simulator 2020. I hope you find this tutorial useful and if you have more questions or things that you would like to see in future videos, please also leave it at a comment. If you find value in this uh, video, don't uh, hesitate to press the like button and uh, check out other videos and maybe subscribe to the channel. Goodbye and that's it for today. Pilot Dreams channel out.